Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas. So this one is for all you aviation enthusiasts. We found a special hangar that lets you jump back in time and also hosts its own glider competition that brings in folks from all over the world. Exciting, right? So join us for the ride as we make our way to the beautiful hill country of Uvalde, Texas. Our destination today is just south of the town of Uvalde, where for a handful of days, some of the best pilots around compete in a battle of skill and speed as they soar through the hill country sky. So if you're thinking to yourself, this doesn't look like your average recreational aircraft, because it isn't. This aircraft right behind me is called a glider, and as you can see, the most obvious difference has got to be this honking huge wingspan. But the biggest difference of them all has got to be right up front. Y'all, there is no engine in here. What? Now, I'm no pilot, so to help fill in the gaps, I met up with assistant city manager Joe and glider contestant Conrad. AC Walkham, the Yellow Texas to Uvalde, Texas. Well, let me present you with this t-shirt to welcome to Uvalde and Garnerfield Airport. Thank you so much. I'm going to fit in, kind of. <laughs> How does a national competition, a soaring, gliding, soaring glider competition, come out to Uvalde, Texas of all places? One thing they're really known for here in our airport, in our area in general, is the thermals. These guys work uh, by the thermal. That's the only thing that powers their gliders. Yeah. So worldwide, we're known for great thermals in our area. So Conrad, I'm going to switch this over to you because you're actually flying in the competition and you know a thing or two about, you know, gliders and I don't. A glider is a very efficient aircraft. It's extremely aerodynamic uh, and it does not have a motor. So the glider is towed aloft by a tow plane Typically, a, a general aviation aircraft that has a good power to weight ratio tows the glider up to 2,000 feet, and then uh, from there, they're, they're let loose to fly for another six hours without a drop of gas. We're using the heating of the Earth's surface to provide power. So what we look for, you may see a dust devil or something on the ground. A dust devil is the start of a thermal. A thermal is just rising hot air. We're looking for all sorts of signs to figure out where that rising hot air is. Competition is for speed and distance. Hiya! It's happening! The planes right now are getting prepared to take off, but the way that this all works is that a tow plane will take them down the runway, and then after that, it's up to them to find enough rising air to get them to the bottom of the clouds. Y'all, this is blowing my mind, and I cannot wait to see this all right in front of my eyes. And just because they're way up there and we happen to be on solid ground doesn't mean the fun has to stop. In addition to hosting the soaring competition, the Flight Center is also home to the Aviation Museum, an incredible collection of Second World War memorabilia. The first thing that really caught my eye is this uh, fashionable jacket here. It was worn by the Women's Air Force Service. And believe it or not, there's actually a lot of women that were flying airplanes. This is how they used to teach back in the day. Instead of going into the planes, they used these, gave you like a classroom lesson, and then you went up into the plane. So I definitely need a lesson because I know nothing <laughs> besides watching from down below. And let me say, I'm really good at that. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas, where we are in Uvalde for the annual 15 meter and open classic glider competition. So as you know, World War II produced some of the most famous aircrafts of all time, which brings us to Huff Air, where they keep the collection of war birds. But y'all, this isn't just a collection of pieces. These aircrafts and airplanes are fully functional and flyable. And to learn a bit more about Huff Air, we met up with aircraft engineer Chip King. Uvalde in the 1940s, when right before the war started and into the war, they built this airport just to train the pilots. Huff Air actually is not a museum, really. It's, these planes are uh, A private collection. Right? A private collection, exactly. And they all fly. Alrighty. This one looks fun. <laughs> this is the uh, T-6 Texan. This is a pretty famous airplane. This was an advanced trainer for the military back in World War II. And uh, this is what taught uh, all the pilots. They'd start out in the smaller airplanes and eventually work up to this airplane. 
it's, I mean, I've seen it in movies, but it's still just so, you know, just kind of mind blowing and impressive just to hear about it and to see it in person. And to see it, yeah. It's, like, this is massive. It's massive. It and is it should a be, massive oh my goodness gracious. But what I do see over here too is the name of this one. Mi Sancha. Mi Sancha. Mi Sancha, yeah. It's the other woman. It's, uh, they, this can happen when you have airplanes like this. It becomes <laughs> yeah. the other woman for a while. Yeah, hey, I love it. On the it. weekends for sure. It has character. I love it. Has it has character. It has character. <laughs> And with just a little while longer before the first of the gliders land, we found a place to eat and grab a beer at a restaurant that pays homage to a certain era that put this airfield on the map. So this is the Hangar 6, a great place to eat, but what makes this place so special is that it's a cool little throwback to the old training airfields from back in the day. Inside you'll find fun retro decor that matches the historic vibe with a tasty looking menu and a list full of draft beer. I think I'm ready to order. What can I get for you? So I hear that the shrimp tacos are to die for? Yes, they're the way to go. All right, sold. Gosh, it looks so good. Well, I hope you enjoy. Let me know how it goes. I'll be back to check on you. Thank you, thank You're you. Welcome. And I'm going in for the kill. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and after a long day riding the winds, not to mention traveling over 300 miles of Texas skies, it was time for the competitors to finally make their way home. But just because the race was done, didn't mean the party was over. The fun was just getting started at the VIP tent. <laughs> Uvalde is one is the uh, we call it the sore spot of Texas. S O A R. <laughs> I like that. This sore spot of Texas. And Uvalde has some of the best soaring conditions in the world. And Uvalde is like very welcoming. Um, I'm from a small town, so you know, being in a small town, you know, it feels like home to me. Overall, you cannot beat Uvalde's hospitality, but with an event like this, you cannot help but appreciate what's right in front of you. Planning your own trip to Uvalde, Texas? Get more ideas of places to visit at visituvalde.com.